to uh, phylum platyhelminthes. We're going to explore it. We're going to learn everything about it. It's the flatworms, okay? The flatworms, which um, look like this, or you can get planarians, which is the, the main organism we're going to study. But platyhelminthes are called the flatworms. That is very important, the flatworms. You know, you, um, you need to know that, that they're called flatworms. Because now we're getting into the worms. And the worms are quite easy to get mixed up. So they all have bilateral symmetry. So they all have bilateral symmetry. Um, what phylum is this? This is platy. Helminthes. This is bad handwriting, but you get the point. Platyhelminthes. All right, so they are called the flatworms. You need to know that. Flat worms. Try to make that a little neater. Flatworms. Um, so they 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 um have bilateral symmetry. Um so, if you have a flatworm, like a planarian, which kind of looks like this, um, it can be cut straight down the middle to produce rough mirror halves like a human. Alright, so they do have bilateral symmetry like that. That's important to know. So these worms are basically the first worms we're going to be studying, and, um, with that comes a little complication. This is a little more complicated than the, the past phylums like Cnidaria and Periphera, especially more complicated than Periphera. Um, members here uh, have nervous digestive, they have nervous and digestive systems, and they can reproduce. Um, they live in wet environments. Planarians live in freshwater streams generally, is where you can find them, but they're very small. Um, and we're going to get into the anatomy of the planarian in a second. Um, so here's the planarian right here. This is what they look like. This makes them look very big. They're actually very small. They're free living flatworms, which is a very important point. Free living means they live on their own. They're not parasitic. They can carry out life functions. They can operate on their own. Um, and their reproduction, because we already studied that, we already learned that they live in freshwater streams, um, they can reproduce asexually or sexually. Asexually is regeneration, which is shown by this picture here. You can split them, you can cut them in half, and like after a week or so, the, there'll be two planarians where there was once one. Or they can sexually reproduce, and um, just like, you know, I don't know the process of that, um, but they do. They can sexually reproduce. Uh, let's let's get into its anatomy really quickly. Planarians um, kind of have complicated nervous systems for their size. I mean, they're like this big. Okay, maybe a little longer, like that big. That's the size. All right. So their nervous systems when when you have a planarian, it's going to have, it's going to look kind of like that. All right. Um, now, it's got longitudinal nerve cords, which start at the brain and venture throughout the whole body like this. So this is the brain. They have two small ganglia um, right beneath the eye spots. So we're going to draw the eye spots in like yellow. So eye spots and then beneath the eye spots there are two small ganglia, two very small brains. And this red here, uh, this longitudinal nerve cord starts at one of the ganglia and it travels throughout the whole body. And those are the longitudinal nerve cords, which I'm going to go over what they do in a second. But then they have nerve cords that bridge across the longitudinal nerve cords called transverse nerve cords. And um, what's cool about this system is that they are able to, they, they can smell. These things can smell. They can, they can feel things. 
they can taste things, and it's all because of this little intricate um, nervous system. They have the eye spots, which only detect light. They can't see, but they can detect light. And then the brain, but they also have these nerve cords, and they have many of them. I mean, think of this. This is a very small um, body structure, this big. That's how big it is. And it's got all of these nerve cords. So when it feels something, the information is sent to the ganglia, which are like bodies of nerve cells. Um, yeah, they're just a bunch of nerve cells. And... Um, they're interpreted there almost instant, instantly because of the amount of nerve cords it has. One more thing to point out that you may have to know um, is that it's kind of got these things called oracles, which kind of look like their ears. If you go back to this representation, those are the oracles right there, these little side point outs. Those are what are known as the oracles, which are in here in blue. And they just, you know, sense things. Um, again, stuff is transferred to the nerve cords and um, to the ganglia, and it's interpreted there. So the oracles are interesting in that manner. So that wasn't that wasn't that wasn't necessarily the anatomy, but that was a brief walk around of the nervous system. Let's talk about the digestive system now. And from each of these points, we'll study the anatomy another planarian. All right. So, in its digestive system, it's only had it only has one hole. So, it only has a mouth which it uses as its anus as well. So, it's going to take in okay, food with its mouth which is like approximately halfway around its body, a little less than halfway towards the um posterior posterior end. But it also has this special structure and let me make this dark. To contrast, it's got this special structure called the pharynx, which is kind of hard to draw. But this is the mouth, and this is the pharynx. So what happens is the mouth, when it wants to eat something, the mouth uh, excretes or secretes digestive enzymes, um, which break down the food, kind of like extracellular digestion and fungi. And then the pharynx extends through the mouth and sucks in that digested food where it enters the... Um, this cavity that it branches throughout the whole body. So, um, all goes into the, the food, the digestive food goes into this like digestive cavity here. And, um, when it's done being digested, like it travels throughout the whole body, but then when it's done being digested, um, and, or if it doesn't need any, you know, the digested nutrients, they exit back out of the mouth. So it's got one hole, like I said. One thing to note before we go forward is that these things are ultra thin. Here's a good picture of how thin they truly are. Um, this is like, it's kind of like paper thin. And you can see here there's the eye spots, the ganglia, and, um, the pharynx there and then the mouth, you know, it extends through the mouth, the gastrovascular cavity and the way it branches through, which is where all the food goes, the ventral nerve cords, and then it doesn't label these, but these are the transverse nerve cords. So that's really how flat it is. It's like pizza dough almost. Um, that's pretty much the extent of planarians that we're going to study. Um, because that was kind of a complicated course. Um, on a test, you may want to know some other types of flatworms, which would include liver flukes and tapeworms. Um, but we're not going to get into that anatomy. Liver flukes are microscopic and tapeworms. We, we all know what tapeworms are. Here's what they look like. Here's some other members. They are very flat. You can tell that the tapeworm is flat, which is why it belongs to this phylum. Liver flukes are also flat. Maybe not evidenced by this picture here, but they are very flat. Some other members. These are aquatic. They live in marine environments. And they're pretty colorful. But we're not going to get into them um, at this point. So that was my video on...